This week in Superheroics, just who is holding that hammer? I'm Phil Boothman, and whosoever watches this video, if he or she be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. Greetings superhumans and welcome to The Trinity, the show where I pick my three favourite superhero news stories from the week gone by and then mock them relentlessly because I've forgotten how to love. First up, James McAvoy has finally embraced his follicular destiny as the world's most powerful psychic. That's right, having sported a full head of hair in both X-Men First Class and X-Men Days of Future Past, the actor has now shaved his dome to embody the traditional look of everybody's favourite wheelchair-bound telepath, Professor Charles Xavier. Although that is a fairly small group of people, so I guess it's not difficult to be everyone's favourite. The move follows a couple of offhand comments in First Class about Cerebro being more effective if he shaved his head, and losing his hair to complete the academic look every professor needs. There's no word yet on how the great man himself will actually lose his hair, but my money's on a dangerous mutant with alopecia-inducing superpowers. Although, having said that out loud, I get the feeling I might not be seeing that money again. Anyway, check out director Brian Singer's Instagram account for more teaser photos as production continues, and watch out for X-Men Apocalypse hitting the big screen in May 2016. Next up, and staying in the X-Men movie-verse, yet another new film has been added to the increasingly stuffed superhero movie slate in the form of a film about teenage super team The New Mutants. In the comics, The New Mutants were formed when Charles Xavier, under the influence of both grief for having lost a number of his pupils, and an alien brain parasite started allowing younger mutants into his school. That's right, an alien brain parasite. Probably an idea to prepare yourselves not to see that element in the movie. The team's roster has included various lesser-known characters such as Danny Moonstar, a Native American girl who can create illusions based on people's greatest fears, the near-invincible Kentucky farm boy Sam Cannonball Guthrie, and Doug Cypher Ramsey, most famous for being referred to in the popular animated series Archer as the gayest X-Man. Again, prepare yourselves to not hear that in the movie. Fox has already found a director for the movie in Josh Boone, most famous for his recent adaptation of teenage love and cancer epic The Fault in Our Stars. Regardless of what you think of that movie, it's understandable that Josh Boone has been snapped up by a big studio, considering that last cinematic outing made somewhere in the region of all the money. Expect New Mutants to come out at some point after the as-yet-untitled third Wolverine movie and the upcoming Gambit spin-off, and possibly include some form of tragic romance, judging by the director's past form. Finally, after being teased for months, Marvel Comics revealed the secret identity of the new female Thor. Any spoilerphobes out there might want to cover their ears at this point, because the woman who now wields the hammer is none other than, drumroll please, Jane Foster. Foster, while currently most famous for being played by Oscar winner and mean-ass rapper Natalie Portman in Thor and Thor The Dark World, has been a long-time ally of Thor Odinson and his sometime dorky alter ego Dr. Donald Blake since her introduction in the 1960s. Most recently she appeared in the really rather excellent comic book series Thor God of Thunder, where it was revealed that she'd been diagnosed with breast cancer and became a member of the Council of Worlds and the first human resident of Asgard, because apparently being best buds with an almighty Norse god has some perks. Who knew? How she came to steal Thor's magical hammer Mjolnir from its resting place on the moon God damn I love comic books is yet to be revealed, but it's fair to say that she's already holding her own as the new Thor, having gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Malekith the Accursed, the Frost Giant, and the Destroyer in just eight issues of pure awesomeness. Odinson, on the other hand, has lost his arm and been soundly beaten by a ruthless businessman who also happens to be a terrifying minotaur. Seriously, I love comic books. So any idiot still out there saying that the new female Thor is just there to please men-hating feminists and social justice warriors can pretty much read them and weep. So do you approve of James McAvoy's new Chrome Dome? Which new mutants do you want to see on the big screen? Is 
four now a title like doctor or senator? Leave all the comments on Facebook or Twitter with the hashtag stay super for your chance to be featured in the next alter ego video blog and until this time next week stay super. Thank you for watching. You can click over there to watch last week's episode of So You're a Superhero or the most recent Alter Ego video blog. And you can click down there to subscribe to Empath Digital for brand new content every single week.